Tarot, Part 4, Ancient and Modern. Comparing only the most recent and the original ideograms of the 22 tarot trumps as a hieroglyphic syllabary yields a wide margin of time within which for the more subtle nuances in the evolution of the tarot trumps meaning to get lost. However, we shall be comparing only the original hieroglyphic with its oldest associated attributes to only the most modern tarot trump versions. This will indeed show the same form of evolution as could be seen to occur over a more gradual span, looking at all the decks in between. However, it will prove a starker contrast by which to measure the similarities of attribute between the modern tarot trump images and their original hieroglyphic symbolism. We will be comparing the original glyphs first to the tarot trumps designed according to the descriptions given in the Golden Dawn cipher manuscripts. It is important to note these cipher manuscripts only describe certain cards, the trumps, from among the entire deck released by the Golden Dawn group itself. Thus, while these trumps are authentic to the Golden Dawn tradition, the images on the remainder of the cards are to be seen more as the invention of A.E. Waite, who designed them based in part on original pictures by L.F.S. Levy. Secondly, we will compare each hieroglyphic original of the Tarot Trumps to the versions designed by Alastair Crowley, the Golden Dawn Dropout, and O.T.O. Ipsissimus. While the purpose, according to Waite, for the Golden Dawn Tarot deck was to forward the mystery tradition, specifically by packaging the ordinary playing card deck with the trumps as a means of reinvigorating New Age interest in Tarot. Alistair Crowley's purpose was to remove the Golden Dawn deck from primary significance in that regard, and to distill the significance of the symbolism of the Tarot trumps, specifically by adding more correspondent symbols to each image. Bear these motives of 20th century men in mind as we compare their respective works of art as reception of the original hieroglyphic message intended behind the tarot. Atu Zero, the Fool. The first letter was Aleph, and the shape of the Aleph was based on the shape of the Egyptian hieroglyphic of bull or ox horns. Thus, the original shape of the letter in the hieroglyphic syllabary was kept as a key to decoding all the world's ancient writing systems in the Library of Alexandria, Egypt. The shape of this letter eventually became transformed into the image of the fool card in modern tarot. Here we see the Golden Dawn version of the first tarot trump so ingrained on our current collective consciousness as a quite unique piece of art entirely apart from the simple hieroglyph from which its shape originally derived. The tarot has become in modern times a collection of anthropomorphications of the letters of Hebrew and their original hieroglyphic meanings. Thus, the symbolic signification of the letter Aleph is now a depiction of a young traveler standing on a precarious cliff face over a tumultuous ocean, with the sun and a small dog behind him. However, if you look very closely, you will see the image of the bullhorn hieroglyph hidden in the pack strap of his knapsack. Aleister Crowley was no stranger to the hieroglyphics of Egypt, nor to the original meanings of the Hebrew letters. He also incorporated his knowledge of the Torah as a hieroglyphic syllabary into his deck's depictions of the trump cards. However, because he was following the tradition begun before him by the Golden Dawn deck, he was forced to compromise his imagery between the original syllabary symbols and the anthropomorphic depictions in the Golden Dawn tarot deck. His symbolism of the Fool card reflects some additional symbolic elements associated with the original letter as well as more closely resembles the letter in its figure. 
Atu One, The Magician The hieroglyphic rendition of the original meaning of the Hebrew letter Pe was a mouth. However, the Egyptian hieroglyph of a mouth symbolized silence. Thus, the earliest conception of the trait equivalent to the planetary attribute of Mercury was the silent psychopomp who led the dead through the Valley of Shadows towards the light at the end of the tunnel in the rebirth from the underworld ritual of primitive superstitious shamanism. That the letter Pe and the corresponding hieroglyphic apply to the planet Mercury, and thus to the magician trump card of Tarot, are calculated according to a variant method from that used by the Golden Dawn, who associated the letter Beth, Hebrew for B, with the planet Mercury, and who thus associated the magician card with the letter Beth, whose meaning was house. However, regardless of having ordered the correspondent Hebrew letter differently, the essential hieroglyphic trait is still the emphasized aspect of the anthropomorphic depiction of the letter. In the Golden Dawn magician card, the robed young male holds up a candle burning at both ends, and points downward with the other hand. Before him on a table are the four essential instruments. Crowley's magician card associates Mercury with Beth also. However, Crowley was no stranger to the mysterious demi-deity of Egypt, Horpakrat, called Harpocrates in Greek, the archetypal god of silence, associated with the concept in magic of not revealing one's methods to the uninitiated. Crowley's image is of Hermes the fleet-footed messenger, Greek god surrounded by the elements of art. Atu II, the Papis. Because the original order of letters in the Hebrew alphabet was different from the order in which they were at the time the Golden Dawn Tarot deck was made, we find the original placement of the letter Beth, Hebrew B, as third in the syllabary as it corresponds to the traits of the Tarot. Beth, meaning house, was a feminine letter, and used in names like Bethany and Bethlehem, meaning house of God. Thus, it is associated with the female character of the high priestess, Pope Joan, or Papist card. The usual depiction in the Golden Dawn deck, regardless of having the letter Gimel, Hebrew G, in place of the letter Beth, retains the essential hieroglyphic meaning of house rather than camel. The twin pillars behind the anthropomorphic letter Beth have the letters J and B on them, symbolizing a mystery known best to Freemasons. However, the mystery deepens considering the transposition of the letter Gimel, juxtaposing the letter Beth. The Crowleyan rendition of the priestess shows the dilemma most clearly by minimizing the image of the camel, the meaning of the letter Gimel, beside the image of the priestess, shown waving a vast net upon an immense loom, symbolizing the feminine household. Again, the modern images cannot escape their hieroglyphic origins. Atu III, the Empress. Again, the letter is out of order from the original Hebrew alphabet of the Tarot as a hieroglyphic syllabary in the modern versions. And so we find the attribute of Venus, attributed to Kaf, Hebrew K, in the original syllabary but to the letter fourth in the sequence in the modern Hebrew alphabet, which at the time of the Golden Dawn's reformation of the Torah, was the letter Daleth, Hebrew letter D. Thus, though the letter Daleth signifies a door, a door is not shown in the image presented for the Empress card in the 22 Torah Trump deck. Instead, the image is based on the original hieroglyph signifying the outstretched open hand hieroglyphic comparable to the letter Kaf rather than to the door signified by the letter Daleth. Here we see the Golden Dawn version of the Empress image, 
rose-patterned robed young woman holding out a short scepter and seated in a wheat field. It should be significant, also, to associate the Anunnaki character trait Demuzi with the wheat and fir trees surrounding the recumbent empress in the Golden Dawn image. Tammuz, the Persian version of Sumerian Demuzi, represented a psychopomp alike Hermes, however was venerated by the seasonal holiday of harvesting the wheat before winter. That Demuzi is male, and Venus traditionally female, is also significant to the use of the rose symbol in the Golden Dawn deck to symbolize a greater concealed mystery. Thus, the Empress, in her cloak of many mysteries, may symbolize not the hermetic hermaphrodite, but a male rather than female god. Here we see the Crowleyan version of the Empress. Again, as throughout, we will see Crowley's images littered with superfluous symbols, copiously cross-referenced and checked to correspond to one another according to Crowley's lugubrious charts in 777, which only makes sense if you understand the confusion between the original hieroglyphic syllabary letter signified by the anthropomorphic character as opposed to the affiliated attributes of the letter in that place in the modern Hebrew alphabet. Here we see correspondent attributes of the planet Venus. While the door of Daleth might be implied in the uppermost archway, the outstretched arms hieroglyph is here mimicked almost perfectly in the character. Atu IV, the Emperor the hieroglyph most useful to depict the idea symbolized by the Hebrew letter He, attributed to the Emperor Tarot trump card, is debatable. I have here chosen the right eye of Horus, Ra, to symbolize the window meaning of He. The reason for this is the ancient saying, the eye is the window to the soul, and the Egyptian concept of fascination or the evil eye. Mal Accio. The window concept in itself is not evil, however possesses more symbolism depending on whether one is inside or outside of it. In this same sense it is said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The golden dawn image for He, the window, plays heavily on the association of this letter with Aries, usually the starting sign of the regular reading of the astrologic zodiac. We see the emperor, an old man with a long white beard wearing a crown and holding an Ankh scepter, seated on a stone-carved throne decorated with four ram's heads, the symbol of Aries. Crowley's depiction of the emperor preserves the mirroring of posture and contraposition of colors with the empress, and, like the Golden Dawn depiction, positions prominently the symbol of the ram. Atu V, the Hierophant The letter Daleth appears here in the original order of the Hebrew alphabet, correlated in the hieroglyphic syllabary with the Egyptian hieroglyphic correspondent to the symbolic meaning of the Hebrew letter. Daleth, symbolizing a door, is here approximated by the Egyptian hieroglyph for a door latch or lock. Daleth is the letter in the original syllabary, and Vav is the letter equivalent in the modern Hebrew alphabet. And while Daleth means door, Vav means nail. Again, the reordering of the alphabet can change only part of the overall imagery of the Tarot Trump yet cannot change the essence of the original letter and hieroglyph, which remain in some form implied within the symbolism anyway. In this case, although the correspondent Hebrew letter is believed to be Vav, meaning nail, the symbolism of the Hierophant card are the crossed keys of the Catholic papacy. We see the Hierophant seated between two large columns on a step up from two supplicant friars. Crowley's depiction of the Hierophant focuses heavily on the correspondence of the card's attributes to those of the zodiac sign Taurus. 
we see featured his depictions of Hathor and of the Babe of the Abyss. The Hierophant is depicted seated inside a stelloctahedron, surrounded by a bull and two elephants. The symbols in the corners of the image show the four elements. Behind the Hierophant's yellow hat-sect crown is a rose, again signifying a greater concealed mystery. Atu 6, The Lovers Zayin, the Hebrew letter Z, appears next in both the original hieroglyphic syllabary and the later rearranged alphabetic anthropomorphications of the letter versions of the 22 Toro Trumps. The image of Zayin is meant to symbolize the Egyptian hieroglyphic depiction of a crook, and so we see the Anubis-headed staff or wand is a symbol of both death and directed power. However, because the zodiac symbol associated with the letter placement in the syllabary deck alphabet is the more commonly recognizable sign of the twins, Gemini, the symbolism of the coupled pair overwhelms the symbolism of the weapon in the later imagery. We see in the Golden Dawn version a young and perfect Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eve stands before the Tree of Life, surrounded by the perching serpent, while Adam stands before the fiery Tree of Knowledge. Above them, the Angel of Revelations appears beneath a bright solar disk. Likewise, the Lover's Card in Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck features the aspects attributed to the zodiac sign Gemini, the Twins, prominently. However, in Crowley's version, there is also a strange homage to Zayin in the form of the Angel of Revelations, who appears above the wedded couple as a hooded, long, white-bearded old wizard. However, mostly the imagery of both modern tarot cards excludes all symbolism of the original hieroglyph the corresponding Hebrew letter was based on, preferring instead to rely heavily on the symbolism of the zodiac sign. Atu 7, The Chariot The Egyptian hieroglyphic depiction that most resembles the Hebrew letter Cheth does not have the same meaning as the meaning usually attributed to Cheth as a symbol. The usual meaning of Cheth is a fence, and the Egyptian hieroglyph most closely resembling the shape of the Hebrew letter is the symbol of a weapon, in specific a slingshot. However, that makes little difference in the subsequent symbolism of the tarot deck imagery, which focuses mainly on the chariot as a word representing the letter cheth, and then the imagery revolves around the chariot symbol itself. Not even the crab symbol of the zodiac sign cancer shows. Instead, in the Golden Dawn decks version of the Chariot Tarot Trump card, originally derived from the Hebrew letter Cheth and the hieroglyph of a slingshot, the Metatron is depicted in his throne chariot, the Hekelah Merkaba, symbolizing the sun by its yellow wheels and winged disc symbol, and symbolizing day and night by the twin sphinx who tow the Metatron's chariot meant to resemble the shape of the letter Cheth and the hieroglyph symbol of the slingshot. The chariot itself is hooded by an overhung veil, painted to resemble the stars of heaven. Aleister Crowley's depiction of the chariot of Cheth and the zodiac sign of the crab is essentially identical to the layout of the Golden Dawn version, with few differences in detail. The voice of God is wearing golden armor and towed by four mythical animals signifying the four elements. The charioteer holds a spinning orb. Atu 8. Justice The symbol of the cattle goad was the Hebrew letter Lamed, symbolized thus hieroglyphically by the oxen's yoke. However, the symbol of Libra, the zodiac sign with which the letter Lamed is associated in Hakabalistic tradition, 
is the scales of weights and measures. Thus, once again, we see, though the symbols appear somewhat similar in shape and design, the oxyoke and the scales are unique symbols from one another, and it is the symbol of the scales of the sign of Libra that the subsequent artists of the Tarot's symbolic syllabary chose to focus on. So, the relevant Tarot card is Justice, symbolizing the scales of the zodiac sign Libra. Although this is card 11 in the trump deck of the Golden Dawn, Aleister Crowley, in his Book of Thoth, explaining his Tarot deck's layout, elaborated on the reason for being misplaced in the sequence of trumps in the Golden Dawn deck. In Aleister Crowley's deck, Adjustment, the equivalent of Justice in the Golden Dawn deck, substitutes for the eighth trump in the Golden Dawn sequence, and likewise the eighth trump in the Golden Dawn deck is substituted later for the eleventh card in the regular arrangement. In the original Golden Dawn layout, Libra and Leo were reversed. Atu 9, the Hermit. The Hebrew letter Yod is meant to signify the closed hand or fist. The nearest approximate Egyptian hieroglyph to this ideogram is that showing an open hand. The sign of the zodiac related to the Hermit card is Virgo. However, neither the literal interpretation of Yod as a hand nor the attributes of Virgo, the zodiac sign, are the focus of the imagery of the usual hermit card. In the Golden Dawn Deck's version of the image, the hand of the hermit is significant in the composition, insofar as it is holding aloft a lamp containing a hexagram. However, the hermit also holds a walking staff and wears a hood and long white beard, which are attributes of the traits of Virgo, only if perverted to an extremity of old age in the form of the mad prophet who lives in a cave archetype. Once again, Crowley's card shows little significant modification from the Golden Dawn motif in the case of the Hermit. While the old man was garbed in gray in the Golden Dawn Dex image, he is garbed in red in Crowley's version. He holds the hexagram lamp low in Crowley's version to lead the three-headed dog Cerberus of Greek myth who guards the entrance to hell. Atu 10, Wheel of Fortune. The Hebrew letter He resembles the letter Cheth, and so the original meaning of He was also a fence. Thus, the Egyptian hieroglyphic assigned to, to He is the one most closely resembling a fence. He was associated with Jupiter, and Jupiter in turn with the fortune card. However, the modern letter of the Hebrew alphabet assigned to the fortune card and the planetary influence of Jupiter in modern times is Kaf, K. The meaning of Kaf is an open hand. However, look to the art of the modern Tarot trump card of fortune and find the ideogram of an open hand. Instead, the image will symbolize the originally Egyptian hieroglyph of a fence, and thus of the letter He. The Golden Dawn trump card of fortune depicts the, originally Buddhist, concept of the wheel of karma and reincarnation in a manner acceptable symbolically to the Western mind of the 20th century. The four elemental animorphs study from open books in each corner, surrounding the three sattvas, Vedic elements, rooster, snake, and pig, depicted as the three alchemical states, salt, sulfur, and mercury, of the adversary archetype, the descending snake, the ascending Satan, and the siegent royal Lucifer. The English letters inside the wheel spell tarot, clockwise, and Torah, counterclockwise. The Hebrew letters are the tetragrammaton, four-letter name of God. Interspersed, that is, all read as one, the English and Hebrew letters spell the name Thaure 
Inside these letters are four symbols on an X-form cross. The symbols signify lowermost water, uppermost mercury, left salt, and right sulfur. Crowley's Thoth Tarot version of the trump card of fortune depicts a ten-spoked wheel surrounded by three attributes of Thoth, the sphinx atop the wheel, the crocodile descending clockwise opposite from in the golden dawn deck, and the baboon ascending. Atu 11. Passion. The twelfth letter in the original hieroglyphic syllabary's order for the Hebrew alphabet was the letter Teth, and the letter Teth was symbolic of a twisting snake. There are two Egyptian hieroglyphic versions showing a twisting snake image. This one depicts the horned viper indigenous to ancient Egypt. The twisting snake glyph eventually morphed into the symbol of the zodiac sign Leo, the lion. Thus, the ideas of the snake and the lion have long been associated, especially in Egypt, where Ra Horus was symbolized by the lion and Set Typhon by the snake. In the Golden Dawn Tarot deck's eighth trump card depiction of strength, we see a maiden symbolizing the preceding zodiac sign of Virgo, petting a lion. In the Crowley and Thoth Tarot deck's eleventh trump card depiction of lust, we see the Whore of Babylon riding on the back of a many-headed lion. Atu 12, The Hanged Man The Hebrew letter Mem, equivalent to the Roman English letter M, the Hebrew letter Aleph, the fool Atu, and the Hebrew letter Shin, Roman English phoneme Sh, are called in Hakabala the three mother letters because they occur at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the Hebrew alphabet. Because of their positions in the alphabet as the three mothers, these three letters were each assigned an elemental attribute, while the rest of the letters in the alphabet were either planetary or zodiacal. Thus, Mem was the mother of the water element. As with the fool Atu, and as we shall soon see, the Atu of the letter Shin, the Golden Dawn Tarot deck's depiction of the character for the card for the hanged man focuses primarily on the trait of his title and does little or nothing to suggest the elemental or alphabetical traits. We see a man with his hands bound behind him, tied in a T-shaped tree by his right ankle with a halo. Much has been speculated about the posture of this character as his left leg crosses at the knee behind his right leg. However, as we see in Alistair Crowley's depiction of the hanged man Atu, the left leg is bound while the right is crossed in front, entirely opposite of the Golden Dawn depiction. Thus, there is less meaning implied by the posture of the legs in the Golden Dawn deck than implication of the water element in Crowley's depiction. We see the hanged man of Crowley's deck is hung from an inverse onchiroglyph, symbolizing life, is pierced with nails through his right foot and both hands, and is bald and naked. Below him is a twisting serpent, and behind him a blue square of seventeen rows and columns. At 13, Death. The significance of the Hebrew letter Nun is not the hieroglyphic image of a fish that defines it, but the concept of living or moving that describes the letter's trait. This contradicts the title of the tarot card, or Atu, associated with this letter. In the Golden Dawn's depiction of the meaning of the letter Nun as not life, but the opposite of life, death itself, shows a skeleton in black armor astride a pale horse. Death holds a black flag on which is a white rose signifying a mystery. 
In the distance are two towers and a sunset. Beneath the horse's hooves lies the dead king, his crown being trampled. A man in the robes of the Christian Pope prays to death on behalf of a woman and child. In Aleister Crowley's depiction of the same concept, a black skeleton wearing an Egyptian crown weaves with a scythe on a long loom a double helix spiral. Above an eagle, below a scorpion, signifying the zodiac sign attributed to the Zetu. Behind the skeleton is a snake, and beneath it a fish, signifying the letter Nun. Atu 14. Serenity. The Hebrew letter Samak symbolized a prop or flail. The Egyptian hieroglyph for this is a forearm and hand holding a crop or short whip. The relative zodiac sign was Sagittarius, the archer. In the Golden Dawn's depiction of the Temperance Atu, we find the Angel of Revelations depicted again, here pouring water upward from one cup into another, symbolizing the alchemical elixir of immortality. The angel stands with one foot on the shore and one in the sea, as described in the book of Revelations, and behind on the horizon is a crown halo above a narrow winding pass between twin mountain peaks. In Aleister Crowley's depiction of the art Atu, a green-robed, two-faced woman mixes water poured from a cup using a wand made of fire into a large golden bowl, on either side of which are an albino lion and a red eagle, symbolizing the phoenix. Atu 15, The Devil The original meaning of the Hebrew letter Ayin was an eye, and the Egyptian hieroglyphic of the eye corresponds to the Hebrew letter Ayin. Neither of these, in itself, is significant of the devil concept, which originated at the same time as the earliest civilizations and records of history. The devil Atu is also associated with the fish-goat zodiac sign of Capricorn. Only by combining all these concepts in a negative light can we begin to see the origins of the devil Atu's symbolic imagery. In the Golden Dawn Devil card, we see the depiction, originally by Eliphas Levy, of Baphomet as goat-headed and hooved, but with the torso of a man, here shown with bat's wings. The inverse pentagram is his crown, and he holds up the sign of Vulcan and downward a lit torch. To his cubic throne are chained the demonized versions of Adam and Eve, with tails symbolizing the trees of life and knowledge. In Aleister Crowley's rendition of the Devil Atu, we see the scapegoat of Mendes also depicted, with long horns resembling those of Egyptian mat, wear of the scales over heaven or hell floating in front of an erect phallus whose two testicles show the genomic separation into four males and four females. Atu 16, The Lightning Struck Tower Although it occurs third in the current Hebrew alphabet, originally the letter Gimel was the 17th letter in the hieroglyphic syllabary and originally signified a camel. Since no Egyptian hieroglyphic is known that specifically signifies the camel, the closest approximation to one shape is believed to be this humped hill shape. The 16th Golden Dawn Atu, Tarot Deck Card, depicts a tower atop a hill. The tower is being struck by lightning, symbolizing the power of war, Mars being the planet associated with this Atu. The tower itself symbolizes the power of authority, the crown on top overturned by the lightning bolt. From the tower's three flaming windows fall a king and a pope. 
The 16th Atu of Aleister Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck depicts essentially the same scene, though stylized highly abstract. A castle tower falls beneath a river of flame emanating from an eye in the sky. The letter Ayin, recall, signifies an eye and occurs 17th in the current Hebrew alphabet. A dove, a haloed serpent, and a mouth breathing fire surround the central theme as additional symbolic images. Atu 17, the star. The Hebrew letter Tzadi, symbolizing the phoneme of soft C, was meant to symbolize a fishhook. The Egyptian hieroglyph of the fishhook was a two-legged upside-down onk that is, a five-pointed figure with a loop for one point. This Atu aligned with the zodiac sign Aquarius, significant also of the water element. The star Atu of the Golden Dawn Tarot deck shows seven smaller eight-point stars around a single larger one. Below these sits a bird in a tree in the distance behind a blonde woman pouring water from two small jars, one onto water and one onto land. She kneels with one foot on the surface of the pond. Due to a peculiar quote from an Egyptian stele transposed by Aleister Crowley, he made much fuss in arranging his system of Tarot trumps so as to render the star Atu subjective epistemologically yet seems to have forgotten the entirety of the modern Hebrew alphabet, is no more so set in stone than his juxtaposition of Tzadi for Cheth. The image is of a bathing blue woman pouring two cups. Beyond the horizon is a planet with a seven-point pole below a star with seven points. Add to 18, the moon. The Hebrew letter Kof, Romanized English letter Q, was meant to depict the back of a head or a face in profile. The corresponding Egyptian hieroglyph shows exactly this, the face of a male head in profile. It corresponds to the zodiac sign Pisces, which is usually symbolized by twin fish, and the Atu is called the moon. The connection between all these symbols is simple relating to monthly tide cycles affected on Earth's oceans by our moon. In the Golden Dawn Tarot deck depiction of the Atu of the moon, we see a quarter moon surrounding the profile of a face, symbolizing a lunar over solar eclipse. A long, narrow, winding path leads towards mountains on the horizon between two towers, each with one window, and ends in a beach in the foreground. A lobster crawls out of the ocean onto the path, and on either side of the shore sit two jackals braying at the lunar event. In Aleister Crowley's version of the moon at whose depiction, we see two lighthouses, each girded by an Anubis, holding an onk. At their feet is a shoreline below which is a scarab beetle, rolling up a solar disk surrounded by blue and red waves. Between the towers in the sky is the shape of a triple-looped torus, in the middle of which are red and blue ribbons, raining down light to the submerged solar disk. Atu 19, The Sun By subtracting part of the linear form of the letter Kof, Hebrew Q, we turn the symbol it represents, the back of the head, around to the front to yield the letter Resh, Hebrew R, and the Egyptian hieroglyph meaning a head seen facing front. The planetary aspect from the symbols of astronomy, the sun, eclipses any other meaning in the title of the card. In the Golden Dawn depiction of the Tarot Trump for this Egyptian hieroglyph, we see the sun's face head-on, surrounded by rays and waves of light, above flourishing sunflowers growing on a brick wall. 
A young child wearing a crown of flowers and holding a red banner sits on the back of a pale gray horse. Aleister Crowley's depiction of the Tarot Trump for the hieroglyph that became the Hebrew letter Resh is equally overshadowed by solar symbolism, and rather than a face, shows two cherubim before a small, crowned, grassy hill below a solar disk and surrounded by the twelve astrological signs of the zodiac. Atu 20, The Age The letter Shin, next to last in the modern and the ancient order of the Hebrew alphabet, was the third and final of the mother letters, representing elements rather than planets or signs of the zodiac. Shin is the mother letter of the element fire, and the letter itself is meant to symbolize teeth. The Egyptian hieroglyphic of a single tooth is shown for comparison. The Atu combining these symbolic attributes into one image is the Golden Dawn's depiction of the judgment, according to the expectation of a rapture at the end of days, when the Angel of Revelations blows the seventh horn, and all the dead rise from their graves to sit in judgment of the living. The Atu combining these symbolic attributes into one image in Crowley's tarot deck is his depiction of the Aeon, an idea he misinterpreted from the Gnostic concept for the 2,000-year solar span of a sign of the Zodiac. According to Crowley's idea of history, man had been around for only two eons already, and was only beginning in 2000 AD to enter into the third. He called these the aeons of the mother, the father, and the crowned and conquering child. Here we see these three ideas depicted as Nuit, Thoth enthroned, and Harpocrates, who is neither seen nor heard. Below these is the Hebrew letter Shin shown. At 221, Cosmos. The final letter of both the modern and ancient Hebrew alphabet is the letter Tau, signifying the phoneme T. Its shape symbolizes a T-square or cross, and its Egyptian hieroglyph depicts a nail. The final astronomical attribute of all is Saturn. The Golden Dawn Atu, the World card, shows a young woman robed with a purple banner juggling two batons, a flame at both ends of each, surrounded by a wreath outside of which are the animisms of the four elements. The final Atu of the Trumps in Aleister Crowley's tarot deck, the Universe card, shows a golden figurine trampling the head of a serpent, holding aloft its tail in two coils toward a golden eye in the surrounding night sky. Behind this figurine is a Trephile Mobius strip, and around the corners are the four elemental animals.